Hi all, by popular demand we're going to be looking now at the French defence. So the main named opening variations of the French defence. So this is on the improved menu, learned from the masters of chessbowl.net. So you have this explorer and we can interactively put in moves. So E4, E6 is the French defence. So there's some notes here. And we'll look at some of the variations. Uh, so we'll look first at the unusual second moves from white. So these are not considered the most usual. The most usual is actually d4. But let's have a look at alternative c4, trying to get a bind on d5, is the Steiner variation. b3 is the Retty variation, and it can go into the Retty gambit after d5, bishop b2, leaving that pawn to be taken. There's some videos on the channel about that, the Retty gambit. The unusual, very unusual Steinitz attack. So Steinitz, the first world champion, just gaining a bit more space there. Ready for an en passant. It makes for quite a different positions from the usual French defence uh, stuff. The daring, I say daring, is it kind of weakening, potentially using the f pawn is a bit controversial because black has d5. The, le, the Bordenay variation, I wouldn't take this too lightly because sometimes black can get a good f5 square on d5, e5, black gets the f5 square. The Bordenay variation. Uh, this knight f3 is still classified as, as French defence, actually. Territory we play knight f3, nothing special there for a name. Uh, knight f3, d5, e5. So only committing this pawn, not yet touching d pawn. And in fact, after c5, we have here the potential for a gambit, the wing gambit. So it's kind of like playing a Benko gamut in reverse, a little bit. Very interesting positions can result from the wing gamut. Uh, now, on e4, e6, let's go with knight c3, which is uh, the going into the pelican variation. So say d5. And in fact, uh, I think f4 is also still pelican variation territory knight c3 d5 knight f3 is the two knights variation the two knights are out uh, e4 e6 queen e2 is the shigorin variation so shigorin was considered one of the fathers of the soviet chess school because of his uh, very creative dynamic uh, play and he had this this line uh, named after him in the French the sugar variation it's unwise for black usually to to play d5 because you're losing that sense form with tempo loss as well for example I think it's generally considered d5 is not great as a response here uh, you can also try the d3 just king's engine attack so you're usually going to play G3 and bishop g2 later. Uh, you can also have, let's take this further, another name variation in here. In particular, this one, where actually you don't Vincenzo, you play bishop e2. This is like reverse Philidor set up. It's called the reverse Philidor for formation. So less theoretical, perhaps, if you like playing the Philidor uh, with black, you might like that. Uh, so. I hope this is interesting so far. Um, e4, e6, d4 is still considered French defence. It's main territory, main line, French defence. d6, if black doesn't play d5, Lengfelner. A bit provocative because it's actually giving quite a bit of space there, Lengfelner. Uh, there's also a6, the St. George defence. Uh, now, on d5, which is the standard thing to try and attack the e4 pawn, bishop d3 is a bit unusual, the Sletter variation. Uh, Alipin makes his name again with bishop e3. You might know in the Sicilian defense the Alipin variation of the Sicilian defense, but here bishop e3, it looks a bit odd, doesn't it? Bishop e3 is gamuting that pawn. Uh, now, 
after d5 ed is the dreaded exchange variation i say dreaded because usually it results in only one shared file limited creative opportunities for both sides but um okay but black needs to be careful because white still has an initiative uh, a pull on the position uh let's go with uh now uh, take this further the exchange variation ed for another name variation in here knight c3 knight f6 bishop g5 it's venius uh, variation and in fact knight c6 is bogolodjabov i'm saying i think i'm saying that quite well now finally after hundreds of times practice bogolodjabov easy to say <laughs> not okay so uh the bogolodjabov variation there uh let's go back uh e4 e e6 um d4 d5 e5 the advanced variations you're advancing that pawn uh, now within this c5 d takes is the steinitz variation so that first world champion having the steinitz variation uh, so this wasn't just an idea of Nimzovich, you know, not to give away literal occupation in the centre. It did occur. Steinitz was playing it. A lot of a lot of actual Nimzovich ideas. Actually, Steinitz was playing uh, before Nimzovich. Uh, but we have now talking of Nimzovich, we have Queen G4, the Nimzovich variation. Mm, okay, uh, so yeah, now the Nimzovich system. Is actually not even taking like that. Just letting, uh, not 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 providing support. Knight f three. Mimsovich system. And let's go back to the main advance variation. C three. So we're still in the advance variation there. But if we take that a bit further with queen b six. Knight f three. Bishop d seven. The wade variation. And if we go knight c6, sorry, e4, e6, d4, d5, e5, c5, c3, knight c6, we're still in the advanced variation. And if we go one move from here, knight f3, we're in the pulse attack. If we go one move or two from here, queen b6, hitting the center. Bishop d3. We're in Milner Barry get one a gambit here again. Milner Barry gambits get, get quite a bit of initiative. Black uh, takes this pawn. Um, so Milner Barry uh, gambit. Um, after c after that knight c6. Knight f3. Bishop d7. Over variation. This is. I've described this as a high class waiting move, so it's the Erva variation. Max Erva was a former Dutch world champion and also president of FIDE. Uh, so, quite an influential player. Um, now, we're going to a big line now, big, huge branch. The absolute main line of the French, by the way, just to put this in context, is this. Knight c3. This is the pulse is considered the main line, but I don't actually particularly like it. I prefer quite often playing another secondary overall in the history of time, knight d2, because it avoids this annoying pin, the Tarash variation. And there's a lot of named lines here, a lot of evolution of named official lines here. So this is a big, gigantic branch we're going to explore now the Tarash. Variation. So Siegbert Tarash, him and Nimzovich apparently weren't on best friend terms. They were kind of winding each other up, but maybe spurring each other on as well. I think Nimzovich even recommended finding someone like that to improve your chess, someone to sort of compete with. So the Tarash variation, it's interesting, both Nimzovich and Tarash are all over the French defence from an ideological, their name variation legacies are all over it. So the Tarash. Uh, this is a weird one. 
you might have seen it's actually I thought it was played from people that don't know anything about the French but actually this is a name line Haberditz variation with F5 it, yeah uh, maybe it's not so bad but there's an argument just because something's got a name it's not necessarily good uh, uh, okay um, knight d2 knight c6 is the Guimard variation the Guimard main line continues with actually the knight move not c3 trying to control these these squares immediately because otherwise black might actually play e5 but here it's a main line Guimard like this uh, now the Tarash close variation is knight f6 encouraging the closing of the center and within this the let's go a bit further in this bishop d3 here c5 c3 b6 bot for that variation very specific idea here not deploying the knight means bishop a6 sometimes and note also the check can be a trap though the knight here is stopping that check so you're not losing a piece on taking taking check but to get rid of the light square bishop is a strategic opportunity quite often because this is the hemmed in bishop the c8 bishop is often the problem bishop uh c3 now if you do deploy the knight this is just this is called the tarash closed variation and if we take this further with knight e2 cd cd this is the main line of the tarash close variation and in fact if we take this one move further here knight e6 the leningrad variation so yeah okay so very interesting um how a lot of these are getting lines um name lines and let's go back knight d2 so we're in tarish variation here let's go back and play c5 now instead of knight f6 which is more encouraging an open game it's called the open variation you know the absence of pawns in the center make a position more open more tactical now within here ed queen d5 knight f3 cd this is an own line bishop c4 queen going back to d8 is the Eliskaze's uh, variation uh, yep and if we go all the way back there and rewind knight d2 c5 ed here ed here ed is just called the ed ed line <laughs> actually when you when you play ed and ed uh yeah <laughs> uh okay so um knight, knight d2 c5 ed ed knight f3 knight c6 is the open version main line so yeah that's a little tour of that group of you know tarash main named variations so tarash is one of the big alternatives but the the big move historically now we're going to look is actually just allowing the pin so just allowing this pin so how good is this pin and technically this is the pulse variation here this position and if c5 we have the martial variation the main move is bishop b4 the winner but before we get that the marshal frank marshal i assume played this d takes is the rubenstein variation akiba rubenstein check out his immortal if you haven't rubenstein immortal d takes knight takes bishop d7 knight f3 is known to be really solid for black and actually called the fort knots variation okay let's rewind now so we saw the fort Knox variation uh e4 e6 d4 d5 uh 
knight c3 d takes knight takes knight d7 is the rubenstein variation and within this knight g f3 knight f6 if you're looking for a line which is named knight takes simply and then knight e5 is the capablanca line apparently so if you're looking for a what to do that just taking a knight e5 so interesting putting pressure on d7 maybe this this check is more effective sometimes so the capablanca line so capablanca must play it uh, let's go back so d takes e4 knight takes e4 queen d5 is the french um the Frere Becker variation. Knight c3, knight f6. Okay, we're going we're to have a look at some alternatives here within the classical. Bishop d3 is the Swiss variation. Bishop e3. Is the Hannenberger variation e5? So that's still in the Steinitz. That's pardon me. This is the Steinitz variation. Just e5 now. So within the classical, just accepting this provocation. It's the Steinitz variation. Now, if we go a bit further into this, knight f d7, f4. So supporting the center c5. Now here, d takes, bishop takes, queen g4 is the Steinitz Bradford attack. So hitting that vulnerable g7, g7 is often vulnerable in these lines. Uh, now here, after f4, c5, d takes, um, instead of bishop takes, knight c6, Steinitz variation. So not taking on C, but not leaving that G7 unprotected for a moment. Now here, A3, so threatening to actually hold on to the pawn bishop takes. Okay, uh, so here, Queen G4 now. Let's go with this. Castles. Knight f3, f6 is the sign. It's Brodsky Jones variation. It's important blacks trying to break open the center, maybe trying to expose white's lack of development. Uh, now on f4, c5, knight f3 is considered like the main thing to do, just to simply support the pawn rather than be adventurous, you know, with taking. Queen g4 just knight f3. Uh, within here, an important line very often played is the Bolzlavsky variation. You might remember Bolzlavsky from variation of Sicilian, but or the, the pawn structure Bolzlavsky holds a weakness on d5. So Bolzlavsky variation here. Um, on let's go back on e5 knight. F D seven an early Queen G four is the Gledhill attack. You can also have let's go back knight f six Bishop sorry without even going E five now. So after C three knight f six, forget E five for a moment. Bishop G five, this is very popular. We go into Something which I played a lot with black in blitz, the burn variation. D takes e4. So quite often, uh, black's got a dynamic line here. Actually, just quickly showing it, which takes takes with a pawn. Um, uh, within the burn variation. Okay, so bishop g5, d takes e4. Whoop. Um, yeah, bishop g5, d takes e4, that's the burn variation. Uh, let's go back now. Bishop g5, instead of d takes e4, bishop b4 is the McCutcheon 
variation. And there's quite a lot of named lines here within this actually. So this kind of counter pin, this is a relative pin and that's an absolute pin against the king. Uh, so interesting line. We have, for example, e takes, queen takes, bishop takes, g takes, queen d2, queen a5. Is the McCutcheon Bogolodzhibov variation? Yes, I'm I'm saying it really well nowadays, Bogolodzhibov. When I'm white, I win because I'm Bogolodzhibov. When I'm black, I win because I'm Bogolodzhibov. Interesting quote from him, something like that. Uh, anyway. So, um, bishop b4, e5, let's go into e5, the advanced variation, funny enough. Now, within here, h6, rebellious, just counter-attacking the bishop. Instead of moving, instead of doing anything else. e takes, Chigorin variation. And within this, actually, this continues, believe it or not, into another name variation. This far, this far, this far, yep, carries on. This move, the Gagoriev variation, quite dangerous for black. That pawn, that von pawn, and the back row is a bit vulnerable. Black moves the queen, for example, this bishop could be loose later on the back row. So, Gagoriev variation. Uh, let's go back. Bishop b4. So we have e5. Now, here, h6. Bishop h4. Instead, the Bernstein variation. And if we go back with the bishop here. It should be uh, noted, yeah. Janowski variation. Um, now, bishop b4. Let's go back. After bishop b4. Sorry, yeah. e5, h6. And there's an auto instead of there or there. Going all the way back is the Dr. Holland Dutch variation. Peculiar, isn't it? Going all the way back to the bishop. Uh, and if you go to d2, hasn't yet got a name here. <laughs> Not going back to d7. Tartaka variation. Going to d2 is like the main thing to do, really. Bishop takes c3, usually, is the Lasker variation. Now here, let's follow this last variation through to knight e4. Queen g4 again. That, F, that g7 pawn is a problem, you'll notice. King f8. <clears throat> and then the peculiar bishop c1 is the Duras variation. Looks like the bishop can go on this diagonal potentially. It's quite dangerous for black. Black's weak on the dark squares, Duras variation. Um, now on Queen G4, instead of trying to protect the pawn with the king, G6 is McCutcheon Luska variation with G6 with 8G6. I know it's famous 8G6. That 8G6, you've got to remember that one. <laughs> okay. Um, Now, let's go on to another major branch of exploration. The French defense classical. So e4, e6, d4, d5. Over history of time, this is like considered the main line. And the classical, knight f6. There are some variations to explore within here. Within the classical variation. Uh, bishop g5. Bishop e7. So bishop takes f6 is the Anderson variation. Now if we continue this, takes e5. 
the bishop drops back and targeting that g7 again poor g7 victimized <laughs> is is the anderson richter variation e5 and the ridiculous looking hell let's go back uh, around here you can actually play knight g8 Prince classical Vistanekis uh, Nimzovich variation because that formula about development isn't so critical when the positions closed so backward development isn't so completely uh, ridiculous so yeah Nimzovich eccentric the eccentricity of Nimzovich perhaps was sometimes just to wind up Tarash but uh, in this case with the closed positions he had a point uh, so Bishop e3 b6 is actually the Frankfurt variation they do nice sausages there apparently as well so um, okay Bishop g5 let's see <clears throat> Bishop e7 let's go back actually e5 knight e4 is the Tartaco variation? Oh, now this is good stuff for the attacking player, which I've used myself. It's the Alakine Chatard. Uh, it's a gambit. You're gambiting a pawn here. Alakine Chatard attack. Next, Urbra, I believe, has used this as well. Um, now, within this, this is the Moroxy variation, A6. C5. Is the brave variation black hasn't actually accepted any gambit at the moment with these moves? Of course, I think the center seems sensible. F6 is the Teichmann variation, now, yeah, just casting. Is actually um, is actually, I believe, Al the Albin Alakine Chassard attack, Spillman attack. Uh, so this should be actually be included. As point ref I'll make it out of that to be identified here <clears throat> to be edited later. Okay, so let's go back now to the classical variation: Knight C3, Knight F6. Bishop G five, Bishop E seven. No. Uh, well, we've had that before. Nothing unusual here. This one. And we're taking on E seven here to weaken black on the dark squares a bit potentially. So that's uh, classical variation territory. Now, if you play Bishop D three here, you get a name. Still classical variation, um, but the Tarash variation within that. So, see, but Tarash, Arch enemy in Nimzovich. It's either Nimzovich or Tarash. <laughs> okay, uh, we have now Queen D two. Rubenstein variation. Knight B five. Alapin variation. Another one for Alapin. How did he get so many name variations all over the place? Uh, now, here, Queen G4. Pollock variation. Yes, uh, the Pollock variation. Uh, F4. That's a Steinitzian iconic move, isn't it? It actually becomes the Steinitz variation. Bolstering the center, you could say the word bolstering. It's an excuse to word use the word bolstering. <laughs> uh, now, if we follow this through, with black seemingly controversially castling kingside, when white has this space advantage. Uh, if we follow it through here, queen d two, knight c six, castles. Queenside, C4, Stolberg variation. 
yeah so that's that's all in the French classical yeah everything you want to know about the French classical but we're afraid to ask now here let's go on to one of the main moves though in the history of time now you see free the pin using that pin which is the whole reason for Tarash inventing the Tarash variation trying to avoid this pin the winner are and it's positive those for positive thinking enthusiasts because it's got the word win in it you might be winning more but if that's the case yeah you should try and be positive about any game openings if if possible uh so but the winner one or uh Nimzovich variation sometimes called yeah i tell you Nimzovich and tarash are all over this french defense battlefield uh for name variations if we go with bishop d3 c5 ed queen d5 bishop d2 unpinning quadrative uh, variation pardon the pronunciation now if we were clumsy and uh, play after knight c3 bishop b4 bishop d2 it's a finger slip variation not mouse slip finger slip variation <laughs> If we play, if we play knight g e two, it's the Anakai Roxy gambit, another gambit. Funny enough, uh, I think Anakai like playing strange gambits to get the interesting compensation you get sometimes from gambits. Uh, now, if we have a look at this, a three bishop e seven. I. I know not now as I say, because this stuff is lame doesn't mean it's necessarily theoretically best, right? That's the disclaimer here. Uh so we go knight e g three here. This is quite a deep one as well. Uh bishop <laughs> no knight e g three, pardon me. Knight e two to g three. Let's qualify which knight's moving to g three. A which knight? Okay. E two knight. Okay, uh Black Castle's uh, bishop e2 knight c6 and I can give me a lots of variation and let's go back for that knight g e2 a3 bishop takes c3 is the alakine gambit proper and we're in here if we take and then knight c6 it's the can variation that's hitting d4 immediately okay now let's go back knight c3 bishop b4 it's gone to the main stuff which is e5 the advanced variation is considered like the main move queen d7 is the petrosian Variation. So Petrosian often, well, he had a very, very solid reputation. This is a very, very solid idea. Here, Queen D7. Sometimes to exchange off the line square bishops with B6 and uh, Bishop A6, or sometimes just fin checking and casting Queen side layer. So the Petrosian variation. Uh, C5. Let's go with C5 instead which is like the main line basically the winner advanced variation now bishop d2 is the boglodgebov variation i'm really happy i can say his name i think well at least confidently uh okay so we have queen g4 the russian variation e4 c5 a3 now this is like the main line move just basically trying to have the double pawns to strengthen the center so a lot of players usually play this if they're going into this now within here if c takes d4 a takes d takes knight f3 this is the winner advanced rules of variation Now let's go back but usually black just takes on c3 takes and we have winner advanced variation 
queen c7 still winner at advanced variation uh, but uh, classical variation now I mean sorry not really it's winner at classical variation this is the classical variation and if we have in fact knight e7 here instead let's have knight e7 uh, and we have a4 this is the Smyslov variation if we have that with knight f3 it's the advanced positional main line if we have it with queen g4 an old favorite the winner advanced poison pawn ration this could become actually a poison pawn here black can get a dangerous initiative and just to demonstrate this is an example of a name variation actually going deep into this idea queen c7 takes and you really need to know a lot of theory if you're going to do this <clears throat> c takes king d1 believe it or not to avoid losing a rook this is the uh, Glagoric, Glagoric variation the winner advanced poison pawn over Glagoric variation uh, now within this after CD in fact knight e2 is the poison pawn Konstantinopolovsky variation Konstantinopolovsky variation yeah a lot of theory here a lot of theory in these uh, particular lines yeah so we've had a bit of a tour there I hope you've enjoyed it as much as me uh, I hope I haven't missed too much out if I have I'll try and put it in an addendum video now yes as I say yeah I mean um, name variations are an indication of activity at least not necessarily brilliant brilliant moves there but activity in these lines they actually get these names that are picked up on and, and used as reference points uh, how games are classified etc so uh, yeah some interesting themes actually recur about the g7 pawn and about Nimzovich and Tarash and Rubenstein pops his name in even though he wasn't world champion he was influential is you're also Alapin is all over the place <laughs> apparently so yeah I hope you notice some interesting trivialities as well and patterns there okay comments questions likes appreciated and yeah check this out the improved menu of chessworld.net learn from the masters comments questions likes appreciate thanks very much cheers then